We ask that you would be with Josh and Jack as they're traveling this morning. Pray that you will be with their flights, their connecting flights, that there be no issues, that be a smooth landing. I pray that at this conference where they're at, that they will glean everything from it that they need to get. And then also uh, spend some uh, quality father-son time because uh, there in Washington, D.C., there's a lot to do, and I, I pray that they'll take advantage of that. Uh, we lift up to you, uh, Nick Jones' family, Lord. Um, we pray that you will give comfort and um, peace to the family. I know that they are um, mourning his passing away, but at the same time, they have peace to know that he's in heaven. And Lord, we just, we just pray that there will be people that will come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior as a result of uh, their testimony through this and uh, throughout uh, all the preparations that are going to go in for the service and, and things uh, of that nature, Lord. And then we ask that you will be with us today, Lord. I pray that you'll give Brother Rogers here uh, the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, as he teaches us Sunday school and he preaches this morning. I pray that you'll use him to be a blessing to us in your name. Amen. Amen. Here you go, sir. Okay. Hey, it is... Uh, it's exciting to be here. You have no idea who I am. <laughs> and that's all right. But um, I was the just, and, and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more during the uh, the morning during the morning service. But I was the last charter member of Walnut Creek Baptist. And uh, I remember meeting Pastor Mincy. We, uh, a friend of uh, a friend of ours, got something at the, at their door about this new church that was uh, that was starting up. Uh, take your Bibles, turn to Philippians one, if you would. And uh, I was going to another church. I'll not go into the details right now. Not really necessary, but. Um, I needed a change, and uh, and so visited Pastor uh, Pastor Mincy, and it was it was it was a kick over the time he was he was having the church at his house there in Walnut Creek. We met in the living room, and uh, it was just it was a lot of it was a lot of fun, and. Uh, Again, I'm going to be I'm going to be talking about this again, talking about more in the uh, in the morning service. Like I said, you guys have no idea who I am, but I love him. This place excites me. Uh, we pray for it, and I can't wait till the Lord brings uh, somebody else to uh, to come in. Uh, I'm, I, I can start stumbling over my words right now. It just, it's just, it's just like that. Um, the Lord moved us on 40 years ago. This summer, I started teaching school down in um, down in San Maria, where my wife had been teaching, and uh, we got married. And I came up here, and she came up here. And um, it's just everything and how the Lord worked it all out that I wound up leaving construction. I was doing concrete and um, wound up pastoring. Been pastoring 32 years now. And it just, it's like, you know, the Lord, every once in a while, he lets you know he can use the foolish things of this world. <laughs> it's like Dr. Bob Sr. would say. Uh, if God can use Balaam's donkey, he can use you. And that has been proven out big time. So it just, I, I had a burden. I thought, I just want to come here sometime and just, my desire is to be an encouragement. You know, just somehow say, hey, you know something? God is still at work. And he is. He is very much. There's a lot going on. How many of you, you look at what's happening and it's like, 
This wasn't the America I was born into. But, you know, God's, he's there. He's busy. So, what I wanted to do, what I thought about doing, is taking uh, two of the, two of the passages that over, the, over time have been a blessing to me while I've been pastoring, and just share it with you. So, we're going to go ahead and do that. We're in Philippians 1. Let's go ahead and pray, and we will start. Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you'd guide. Thank you for these folks. Thank you for Heritage Baptist. I pray, Lord, that now you would speak to us. We're not looking to man. We're not looking to flesh. We're looking by faith to our God. So, Lord, speak, we ask, in Christ's name. Amen. I'm sorry. There's times I'd like to just stop and say, hey, let me tell you about this. That's the so. I moved from Martinez to Pittsburgh to Antioch. Again, while I was in construction. And it was just, it was just really neat, you know, to be here. Antioch was just so small <laughs> at that time. There was just nothing. By the way, how y'all doing when it comes to <laughs> what a question. When it comes to crime, is Antioch doing okay? Mm. No? Okay. Yes. All right. Well, welcome to California, right? <laughs> Boy. Okay. So let's start in verse 1, Philippians 1. Paul and Timotheus. By the way, I'm, I use the King James. So, anyway. The servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God, our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. And you know, let me make mention here. When I remember heritage, I thank God. I really do. I, there's, there's so much here, but we'll talk about that later on. Verse 4. Always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy for your fellowship and the gospel from the first day until now. And here's our verse for this morning. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. You know, I, like I said, I, I never saw me doing what I'm doing. Okay, I got a three-year Bible diploma from, from Bob Jones. Big deal. I just didn't see it. <laughs> and then I married this guy. And there were people that came to me and said, ah, you marrying Bernie, that's proof God's going to call you into ministry. And I said, listen, the chances of that are fat and slim and slim's out of town. It just, you know, <laughs> it ain't, it, it ain't going to happen. But God, you know, kept on working. But like I'll be sharing during the uh, during the morning service, uh, there were some struggles along that line. Brother, you right here. How old are you? Am I a seat? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sixty-nine. Sixty. When are you turning seventy? Uh, February. February. Okay, I turned I turned seventy in October. So we're there, man. <laughs> we're there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I get to looking back, and, and you know how it is. All of a sudden, it's like, man, there is so much more in the rearview mirrors now than there is in the windshield. I remember I, I started pastoring when I was 37. And uh, when I turned 40, the only thing I noticed was people don't call me young man anymore. When I turned 50, I'll never forget. I woke up and I thought, you know what? I've been I've been lied to, lied about, cussed at, this and that. You know, just all kinds of stuff. I don't care anymore. But when I turned 60, it was like, you know what, Lord? Wow. I, I, I've just rounded third base. Hmm. Lord, help me. I, I want to do it right. Like we were talking about, finishing strong. And... Uh, that has been, that has been on my heart because now here I am, uh, approaching seventy, you know, very soon, and I'm needing somebody.
to step in eventually and take, you know, take my spot at a church that I love dearly. Uh, and the pickings are slim. You know, praise God for other men, young men that have gone out of our church, that have gotten saved and the Lord's using. But meanwhile, the boy, you know, and some of those young men, they have gone off into seeker-sensitive type churches. And I'm sorry, I, I, I'm an old-fashioned independent Baptist. I just, I, I just am. So anyway, it's just, as, as I was going along uh, in the pastorate, it's like, Lord, there, there's so much that I still got to learn, I feel like. Because again, I just, you know, not qualified. But God showed me something. Be confident of this very thing. That he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. I want to give you four points and then we're done. But it's stuff that has so spoken to me. If you're into taking notes, Put down point number one. Be confident. Be confident. God is no quitter on his children. If, if, we can, if we can just get this idea across in our heads, every time, every time we open our Bibles, God is taking the words that we're reading, and he's building us. He's doing something in our lives. I, I used to, um, when, when, I, when, I first, uh, when I first started coming to the church, I was still in the Air Force Reserve. I was up at Travis Air Force Base. I was on the C-5. There at, uh, there at Travis, they would have, they would have a, uh, uh, a thing called a static display. So there's the C5. There is a C5 sitting there. Uh, it's open to the public. You can come in and see it, but it's just sitting. You know, it's not flying. They're not fueling it. You know, it just, it's, it's there. You know, the Air Force is showing off what it has. That's not what God does. God doesn't create static displays. He builds Christians to do the work of the Savior. That's what is happening this morning. Not because the, uh, the tool is so brilliant. Don't think so. But, and, and I, I've, I've got to back up, I've got to back up on that. Seriously, I don't know how. I, I don't know how to impress on you. The, the depth of this, I didn't see myself doing what I'm doing. But God called. And, and, and I think what needs to happen is, is people need to see beyond their own their own personal ability and see what the gifts of the Spirit are for you to, to, to do His work. I, I, was, I was so down on myself at times and I wound up paying a price as I'll share in the morning service. But it's been amazing. The one thing that happened, uh, I, again, all Christian concrete crew. By the way, I started coming, and I got the other guys that I was working with, and said, hey, you got to come to this new church. Everybody came, and it was fun. It was really good. But the growth that I thought, you know, this is what I need. The growth, I wasn't recognizing just how precious it was. Now, look, at 70 years of age, coming up on 70, What's your name, brother? Max. What? 
Miles. Miles. <laughs> Do you have tinnitus as well? <laughs> I get between working on the flight line and working construction, you know, the, with the, all the loud sound. My, my ears, you know, I'm always waiting for somebody to pick up that phone that keeps ringing. But, um, uh, you know, you get to this point and it's like, you know, Lord, can you really make a difference in my life right now? You know, if I get into the scripture, if I'm studying, the answer is yes. To me, uh, I mean, you know, Paul told the church at Corinth, though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Have you recognized, brother, we just can't play football like we used to? <laughs> you know, two years ago, I'm getting ready to, uh, to preach one Sunday morning. And all of a sudden, I get this tightness in my chest. On Thursday, I had quadruple bypass. This last year, I had double hip replacement at the same time. That was so much fun. I'm, just, I'm loving this. Between one knee replacement and two hip replacements, when the rapture happens, I'm going to make so much noise. People, all they're, they're just going to hear clang, clang, thud, you know? But I've recognized, I've, I've, I've recognized this, that God is still at work trying to use the foolish things of this world for his glory. I love that. Not because I want to be popular. Not because I want to say, look at me. But again, like we said, brother, finishing strong. And I have found out, and I'm sure, you know, y'all are finding out the same thing. I found out Finishing strong isn't a walk in the park. Mm -hmm. It's rough. We've got, you know, older people uh, in our church, and my soul, you know, they're they're struggling and stuff. We've got a lady in our church, this last week she just turned 95. And she doesn't have one ache or pain. Wow. Wow. And it's like, I don't know, I don't, I, I don't know what pill you're taking, but I want it. <laughs> Our confidence, the confidence that we can have in this is profound. That Greek word that translates confidence there, it means to persuade, to convince beyond all doubt, being confident of this very thing. Now, I don't know what your Bible is telling you when I'm, you know, I'm having my devotions, but by God's grace, I, I, I want to be listening. He also uses the word you. Paul says, I'm talking to, what's your name, young man? Charlie. What? Charlie. Charlie? How old are you? Ten. Ten. <sighs> Enjoy it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Be easy on the joints in your body. The knees, the hips, you know. Be careful. The confidence that you can have is personal. Being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you, you, personally. That's what we need to keep up. By the way, our confidence is powerful. Why? Because the heavens declare the glory of God. The firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, night unto night show knowledge. I mean, we have a powerful God. So we can be confident. Look, if you read through Scripture, and I can, brother, I, I, I can leave these notes. If anybody wants to go back over them, I'll, I'll just, I, I can just leave them with you. But our, we can have confidence in our present walk. Romans 8, 28. And how many of us? We know this. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. We know this because God is not a liar. So praise God. We can be confident in our present walk and his present work. Ephesians 2.10. You know, we use so often in giving the gospel to someone, we use Ephesians 2.8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, 
that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But there is also a work that's going on. It's a work. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Now, when did God quit? Answer, he didn't. He hasn't. I, uh, oh man, <laughs> we're not being taped and I can say some things about people. No, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> but you know, ha have, have you ever, brother, has any of the preachers that have been here, I know, I, by the way, I, there were times I was a headache to Pastor Nancy too. <laughs> but you know, you feel like walking up to somebody, and of course in Christian love, taking them by you know, the shirt and, and look at, and, and I'm talking about guys, you know, head to head, you know, and going, do you realize the God that you are fooling with? You know, you're thinking he's not going to know, he's not going to this, or he's quit on me. God is no quitter. God is no quitter. What he does in us is powerful. So number one, Charlie, what's the word? Be good man. Somebody give him a dollar. I, <laughs> oh, my wallet's in the car. <laughs> okay, write this down. Number two, be cognizant. Be cognizant. In other words, be aware. See, here we are. You know, we're sitting in the chairs. Right, Charlie? Sitting in the chairs, and some old guy from another place, now he's he's preaching, and I don't know. You know, he's just, I don't know. Uh, but the fact is, we're, we're, we're looking at God's scripture. And again, he doesn't work on static displays. He's always at work. You put a verse in there, and if you will meditate, God will change you. So be aware. First of all, be confident in this. Praise God. We've got a God that doesn't quit. But secondly, be cognizant. Be aware that he is at work, even right now. We know the verse, Romans 12, 1 and 2. I mean, there's so many passages that we wind up going to. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service and be not conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that takes place while we are being confident of what the work is that God is doing in us there is something that he seeks to change how many of you have ever struggled with discouragement my hand is up I'm looking forward you hearing the message at 11 because it can go beyond discouragement big time and it did with me but that's that's for them but God has a way of changing our minds by the way what's your name young lady Annabelle Annabelle <laughs> we've got a granddaughter how old are you 13 13 how old is Annabelle She'll be 13 in August. Oh, yeah. Grandkids. By the way, is he a good younger brother? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> be careful. When your sister starts saying that, you know. Be... <laughs> Listen. Again, you know, we've talked about this being confident. Excuse me. For we are his workmanship. We, we, we look. We, we go out. My wife and I love to camp. And there's places, that's one thing I love about being in Sacramento. You get on Interstate 80, head up the hill, you're there. Man, it's great. Love being out there under the stars. The God, the very God that knows us like we will never know ourselves, who put the stars as they are. I mean, this universe is off the charts. How do you describe it? That same God 
is tinkering within ourselves right now. He seeks to do the work. Sometimes I think I, I don't think we I don't think we stop to consider just the fact that it's the God of the universe who is incredibly personal with us. I'm preaching on Sunday nights uh, right now on the gifts of the Spirit. I've had to leave it for several weeks because we had other stuff going on and other people preaching. But tonight when I get back to it, I'm going to tell the folks before we get into 1 Corinthians 12, we need to go back and recognize that we need to have a passion to know God. Some people, they mess with the gifts because it's like, hey, this is cool. You know, this God is telling me I can do this. And it winds up being something to their benefit. Wrong. It's for his glory. Think about that. God is working. Be cognizant. Be aware that he is taking scripture and renewing our minds to bring glory to himself. We're not here in Sunday school because this is what good Christians do. We're here in Sunday school because our God has something to say to us. Something to do in us. So, number one, be. Number two, be. All right, there you go. You guys got a youth group. This is great. They're listening. I bet the teen, I, I bet the adults aren't listening. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so number three, be cooperative. Be cooperative. Martin Lloyd Jones made this comment. He said, "Faith." according to our Lord's teaching, is primarily thinking. And the whole trouble with a man of little faith is that he does not think. He allows circumstances to bludgeon him. That's the real difficulty in life. Life comes to us with a club in its hand strikes us on the head, and we become incapable of thought, helpless and defeated. You know, I, I, tell, uh, I tell people all the time, you know, I, I praise God for convenience. I praise God for electric lights. I praise God for indoor plumbing and air conditioning. Amen. Glory. Yeah. But there's something that we lost when we got all this, for our 20th anniversary, being there at, uh, at, at Faith Baptist, the church sent us to Israel. Who was it? Bro I'm not thinking of his name right now. Uh, Craig Hartman. Do you guys know Craig Hartman? Oh, you don't? Okay. All right. Um, anyway, he's a he, neat guy. Uh, long story. He's one of our missionaries that we support. But uh, went with him. I mean, there's. I, did Rick Armstrong go with us on that trip? Maybe not. But uh, uh, there were some people that you all would know that went with us on, on this trip. It was really neat. I'm telling you, it blew me away. The uh, the second day we were there was my first big time wow moment when I wound up standing in the place that Paul was standing before King Agrippa. That just, I mean, it, it just, it blew my mind. It's like, wow, this, this is going to be quite a trip. And it was. But to get this idea of how the Lord tried to use things to teach us, we, one of the places that we went, 
was the place where he preached what everybody calls the Sermon on the Mount. And we found out that 1.5 billion birds fly twice a year, back and forth, uh, above. You know, one earlier in the year they go this way and then they go that way. But the point is, it's roughly about 1.5 billion, billion birds. And here's the Lord, and he's saying, now, look at the birds. You know, stop and think. This is what, you know, happens. It, does God take care of them? And then he turns and goes, look at the trees. Look at, look, at, look at the grass. So we can't do that from in here. We don't go, look at the lights. Look at the walls. The point is this. He's trying to show us God takes care of us. And, and, and what Martin Lloyd-Jones is saying, you know, think about this. If God takes care of the birds, O ye of little faith, is he going to take care of you? Well, the intelligent answer would be, duh. Yeah, he does. So the question is, why do we have a hard time believing? I mean, seriously. Why? So, you know, with, with that in mind, we do this. Charlie, what's the first one? Be confident. confident. Everybody say, be confident. Second word, cognizant. cognizant. Be aware. Number three, I've already given it, be cooperative. cooperative. Be cooperative. Are you by any chance, because of all this, what we've looked at so far, are you by any chance resisting what the Lord is seeking to do in your life? Now, before you get cocky and say, nah, I never do that, the Lord, <laughs> oh boy, the Lord convicted me earlier this year and showed me some of the times that I've resisted him. This is what I was doing. I was thinking in myself, I can't, even with God's help. Brother, you know what, how embarrassed I was before my God in thinking about that? Here I am, God called me to be a pastor out of this place. And now I'm realizing that I wasn't really counting on the power and wisdom of God. I was counting on the power and wisdom of self. And since I'm looking and I'm going, I, I can't do that, I didn't. And like the Lord tells us elsewhere, we can shorten God's arm if, you know, we just say, well, you know, I, I can't. It just ain't going to happen. Do we stop and realize what we have done, we Christians, what we've done to our nation? Because we have done just that. Well, I, you know, we just can't, you know. It's, it just ain't going to happen like it was, you know, in the good old days. That must break God's heart. It's, it's more than just perilous time shall come in the last days. The Lord said, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. Well, sure, you know, we're going to, we ain't what we think we is. <laughs> if we're holding him back, he's not going to force himself. We need to cooperate. Now, like I told you, brother, you know, we look back at this place and, and, and you know, we have such incredible memories here. You know, again, it was 40 years ago that we left, but, you know, I kept in touch with Pastor Mincy, and we've had such a great time. And, oh, but, you know, I got tempted. I was going to get him on the phone, do a FaceTime call with him. Like, hey, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we ought, to, we ought to do that. What, what do you guys think? Unless he's a 
Oh, yeah, he, 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 you know something? Maybe right. we're going to do that. Maybe yeah. we're going to do that. How many of you knew Pastor Mincy? Raise your hand. Okay. We need to cooperate with God. Even though, right now, humanly speaking, things aren't like we would like for it to be. We need to have a pastor. Does God know? Yes. I was talking to Pastor Mincy one time. It broke my heart. You know, you, it's been tough for you guys. And Pastor Mincy said, God loves his church. Mm. And he'll take care of it. That's about a direct quote from Pastor Mincy. I thought, that is absolutely phenomenal. One of the things that needs to happen is churches need to recognize that pastors don't come from out there. They come from within local congregations. Now, the pastor, your next pastor, could obviously come from another place but we need to be recognizing that people are being, you know, they're in all of our congregation. Uh, I was talking to the brother here. We've got a young man in our church. He's now in his early 40s. When he was in our church, he was in eighth grade, backwards as all get out, shy the whole bit. And some other people in the youth group thought, we're going to try to draw this kid out. And then one day, and he, they did. And then one day, uh, he went soul winning with a man in our church. That was it. That pulled the trigger. Mm. And he went to Ambassador Baptist College. He knew at 15, God had called him to be an evangelist. Mm. And let me tell you something. You talk about somebody who maximizes on prayer and who is now, <clears throat> I mean, he's around a country. Right now, he's up in New England with a tour group from Ambassador going to churches. But I mean, God has used him greatly. But I would encourage the men here. Y'all need to come up for our, we have, it's, it's a meeting we call the Two Minute Warning. Uh, the first weekend, first Friday and Saturday of November. It's, it's, it's great. We'd love, to, we'd love to have you there. I just realized I'm... <clears throat> so, in, in conclusion, so, let, let, let's, let's get this. Okay, first of all, be confident. Be confident. You know, it's our God. Be confident in this very thing that he which hath begun a good work and you will perform it under the day of Jesus Christ. So be confident. Number two, be cognizant. Everybody, number three, be cooperative. And we're all going to be cooperative today, right? Amen. <laughs> number four, be courageous. Be courageous. Why? Because he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it under the day of Jesus Christ. Why? Because it is God which worketh in you both the will and to do of his good pleasure. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Why? Because my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Why? Because my, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made purpose, made perfect in weakness, our Weakness. Why? Because have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Why? Because you can cast all your care upon him. For he careth for you. There's, a, there's an illustration, maybe you've heard it before. It's a well-known one by about George Mueller. He kept a motto. On his desk, many years, it matters to him about you. Now, I want to ask you something. Do you believe it matters to God about Heritage Baptist? 
Because if you don't, but it does, it matters. And I'm telling you, like I said, I can't wait to see how God is going to work. And he will, and he has. And we are praying for you. And we love you. Except for one thing. If I get a chance, I'm going to take this thing and chuck it out the back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is so good to be back here. I can't wait. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to morning service. Just sharing a couple of things with you guys. Amen. From, from way back when. See, that's Charlie, that's that's how old people talk. <laughs> I, I, I finally bought a t-shirt that says, it's weird being the same age as old people. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're looking forward to good service this morning. I pray that you would bless. In Christ's name.